Hi, my name is Yonatan, and I will be presenting with my teammates, Kane and Maddie, on the next steps for battery electrodes. We'll be taking a look at how additive technology, which is 3D printing, can be used to improve the manufacturing and performance of lithium ion batteries. To introduce the topic of battery manufacturing, we should first start with understanding the lithium ion battery and its components. We'll be focusing on the lithium ion battery because of its abundance in society. They're used for phones and electric cars and perform better than many other types of batteries in terms of their high energy and power density capacity. Compared to other battery types, lithium ion batteries have a higher density, are more flexible and lightweight and have a longer lifespan. The batteries consist of a cathode, an anode and an electrolyte. The cathode is a metal oxide containing lithium. The anode is made of graphite and, silic and or silicon, and the electrolyte fills the battery. Standard lithium, lith lithium ion battery cell production is a complex process that has three parts, electrode manufacturing, cell assembly, and cell finishing. We'll be focusing only on electrode manufacturing. The current process for electrode manufacturing uses casting of a slurry for both the anode and cathode. The anode and cathode are formed separately by mixing their active components with binders and additives. These binders and additives assist with the mixing and they also improve the battery's characteristics. All of this forms a slurry that is then deposited onto a foil. It's then dried and compressed before being dried again. The electrode sheets are split up and the anode and cathodes are brought together in a process called the stacking. The drying process is especially time intensive, taking up to 30 hours. Advancements in electrode production have allowed for micro and nano structuring with more complex structures, improving energy and power densities. Manufacturing advancements can help with new use cases, such as wearable batteries. This report will take a look at additive manufacturing technologies as they relate to electrode manufacturing. The process will be compared with the standard casting method in terms of cost and performance. We'll make recommendations on the next steps for improving the additive manufacturing of battery electrodes. I'll now pass it off to Kane to discuss the latest developments in 3D printed lithium ion batteries. I now introduced a design process to make this new improved 3D printed lithium ion batteries. One of the most popular 3D printing process is fused deposition modeling. It is low cost and it can be applied in a wide range of applications. The innovation comes from customized design 3D printed electrode that can maximize the capacity of the battery. We know that we commonly use polylactic acid filaments as the basis for FDM 3D printing. But PIA itself is electrically inert. Therefore, we have embedded lithium electrode active materials with PIA resin so it can be used for electron storage and act as battery. The PLA is first dissolved in dichromethane and mixed in with lithium ions. The third ingredient is the conductive material such as carbon black or graphite to get even better electron transport capacities. Additional additives also be introduced in mix in order to uphold the mechanical strength of the battery when it is being 3D printed. After the mixture is made, it then undergoes tape casting process where the mixture is made into a thin film of even thickness. 3D printed battery is really a hybrid process that uses many manufacturing methods instead of just simple casting. But the customized uh, manufacturing method allows for us to produce a 3D printed battery that has optimal energy and storage capacity. After tape testing, it is then extruded to make fil the filament necessary for FDM. Customized electro can now be printed using this filament material after it is being processed through the extruder. Because the resolution of the FDM, the interior structure of the polymer can be controlled down to micro scale. This allows for a highly porous battery structure with high surface to volume ratio 
enabling better electron storage and transfer and improving the battery capacity. And now I will pass down to Maddie to analyze the analyze the technology behind this improved process versus what we have currently. So the following section will briefly compare the conventional casting process and the additive manufacturing process. This comparison was done based on two studies. In both cases, a 3D printed electrode and a laminated one were fabricated using the same materials and compared. The image shows the 3D printed electrode. The difference with the conventionally fabricated electrode is the addition of ridges, a more complex geometry that increases the surface area, which a casting process cannot reproduce. As mentioned by Kane, obtaining a proper paste composition for 3D printing is difficult, but it all comes down to two physical material properties, viscosity and shear stress. By changing the paste solid loading percentage, these parameters change as, this, as depicted in the graph. An optimal paste must exhibit a shear thinning behavior in order to be extruded and for the extrusion to be controlled. And the higher the solid loading, the less likely the structure will collapse after being extruded. This is one of the many ways that additive manufacturing of electrode is more complex than conventional methods. Battery performance depends on the amount of, added <clears throat> the amount of active materials in an electrode as it determines the energy and power in the battery. Higher densities can be achieved by increasing the volume fraction of the active material or by increasing the amount of material by making the electrodes thicker. However, both approaches have setbacks for the conventional methods that 3D printing can overcome. The graph shows the contrast between conventional and 3D printed structures as a function of thickness for specific capacity and aerial capacity. The takeaway is that a 3D printed structure can achieve a high aerial capacity without compromising its specific capacity but it is not the case for laminated electrodes. This plot shows how promising 3D printed electrodes are in terms of aerial energy and power density when compared to the laminated structure highlighted in green and other recently reported values for 3D printed lithium ion batteries electrodes. The difference in energy and power densities among the different 3D printed batteries is mainly due to the materials used for the paste. This goes to show that 3D printed structures have the potential to meet higher energy and power demands for varying applications, but work must still be done material-wise to find the optimal paste composition. As for the manufacturing processing time, it takes longer to print an electrode than to cast it, but casting has a longer post-processing process. Thus, it can be concluded that additive manufacturing greatly reduces the amount of time required to dry the structure and reduces its collapse, as shown in the graph, since it is during the drying phase that structures collapse. In conclusion, as most studies on additive manufacturing of electrodes were done in the last few years, only the concept of using 3D printing has been proven, but the technology has not yet been brought to the market in any large-scale commercialization. Current technology involves casting a slurry until a foil before drying and pressing to form thin sheets that are stacked to form the final electrode shape. Additive manufacturing technologies such as FDM have been applied to electrode production to reduce manufacturing times and improve performing characteristics. The next step is to scale the manufacturing as well as continuing to improve the lithium iron battery performance. There are also many opportunities to expand the range of materials used to create, to increase the battery's energy and power densities, as well as finding ways to um, use more sustainable materials to reduce the carbon footprint and environmental impacts of lithium ion batteries.